Eldorado Cadillac. I'm not showing you what's under the hood. There's too much junk. What am I working on today? I just put a new boot on the axle of that Toroda. I got my buddy here, Eddie, helping me. There's a Honda axle that's junk. And now I am working in this blazing hot 137 degrees Fahrenheit sun. Oh, it's so nice. It's going to be winter before you know it. I'm working on my 6.5. What are we going to nickname this truck? This was going to be the motor for the turbo turtle. But I'm not going to part this truck out, as you well know, because I've told you enough times. Turbo diesel. A friend of mine just found one in the Cape Cod area. A rusty 93 regular cab. Ran when parked. So I buggered up the seal. I got one coming. And I took off the drum. I'm going to clean this up a bit. I'm going to take this off. And... Uh, clean up the backing plates, flatten the area where it rides. I don't think I'm going to rebuild the cylinders. And I've got to get some springs. I was looking at a one ton 6.5, a 98 with the air conditioning compressor on the other side yesterday. And all four springs were really, really, really rusty. And only one was cracked. And this one's got two that are busted right off. And the truck's not that rusty. And this one is half busted off. So that's junk. So a friend of mine in Massachusetts, found one that ran when parked, a red one, $375, we'll see if I can get it, it's a long way, it's almost Cape Cod, that's 300 miles, 500 kilometers, so I took off the drum, I wanted to inspect the bearings, but the outer bearing is held in place by a C-clip, and let me tell you, we worked on that C-clip for 20 minutes, went to the forum, the square body forum, they said, oh, just use a snap ring plier. Yeah, right. Well, I use these cheapy made in China pliers for five bucks. And I can't believe I didn't bust one of these off because this snap ring is the strongest snap ring I've ever encountered. And I took a lug wrench from a Jap scrap and I bent the hubcap prior off her to 90 degrees. And with one pair of crappy pliers and multiple screwdrivers, we were able to remove the C-clip. Bearing doesn't come out from this side comes out from the inside. But what I discovered after I removed the C-clip is the C-clip holds in the race that it rides in, or the cone. So even after I removed the C-clip, I still couldn't remove the bearing. So what I was able to do, and I've got an hour into this, which should take five minutes. This thing is heavy. What I was able to do was take my pin punch, and you gotta use a 3 16 pin punch, and get not the bearing outer race, retainer, which is this thing right here. You don't want to hit that because you'll bugger it up and then scrap this Made in USA Timken bearing. You have to go behind it and there's just enough room to get this in and push the cone down and this thing just fits in. Anyways, I was able to push the cone that the bearing rides in down probably, oh yo, that much, half an inch or so. And then you can rotate the bearing up and look at it. And that bearing is, come on piece of crap phone, that bearing is mint. It is beautiful. So all this work for nothing. So I cleaned this off and it rides in differential ADW90. So I'll fill it up maybe with some synthetic, but this bearing looks beautiful. So all that work for nothing. But had the bearing been chewed up or scored or burned or whatever, I would have been happy that I did it. So I know it sounds nasty, but this bearing is perfect. So I'm gonna tap it back in. I'm gonna whoop, heave this baby over. I'm going to call the guy tomorrow with that 3500 flatbed that I found, extra cab with a flatbed that I found on the way back from Mustelpalooza. I'm going to push this back in with my Made in USA punch drift. This thing is a unitool. I'm going to tap that back in. And uh, I got a Volvo here. I got the Grand Prix. We went to Mustelpalooza. We made an awful long video. We got a junk Mercedes in the yard. We got a Toyota. And this thing just came in yesterday, running on four cylinders. The woman just said, you know, I'm done with this thing. It uses too much gas. I've only got one girl to take to school. I don't need a minivan. So I bought it for a couple of hundred bucks. Battery's dead. The title is on its way. If we turn the key, let's see what happens. We've got no key to turn. Oops, let me get the key. And we'll crank this baby up and you'll see, we'll see what you have to say. i got all my tools inside. We've had five, five minutes of rain. He's busy! Uh, 
Cadillac. You look good in this, buddy. <laughs> You're gonna sink and disappear into those seats. That's one heck of a Cadillac. Let's see if this baby cranks up. I got my buddy here helping me, but he's afraid of the sun. He came from the Dominican Republic. He says it's not so hot there as it is here. Let's crank this baby up. Uh-oh. They're rusted. That is daylight that you see through those rockers. What a shame, it's only got 130,000 miles. Let's see if it cranks up, the battery's probably dead. Oh man, I didn't think it would start, and it stalls. Oh, the starter just engages by itself. It's a smart starter. So what I did was, I pulled off this spark plug, and listen, nothing. I pull off this one. So we know that that one's good. The spark plug is good, the coil's good, the wire's good. And then I went to the back, and I pulled off this one, same thing. So this is probably a double coil, one co coil fires two cylinders. I've never worked on one of these. I need a junkyard coil pack. I pull off this one and it goes zap, 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 zap. So you know that it's good. So I need a coil pack for a 2002, I don't even know what this is. The air conditioning is working 3.8 V6. And she's running rough because Coil's not firing, and the rockers are rusty, but the brakes work. I drove it 100 feet. The brakes work 163,000 miles. That's interesting how the camera's picking it up and it's going back and forth like that. Interesting. And the air conditioning does not work. You turn it off and it turns itself back on. It came with a few sticks. Sticks and stones can break my bones. It's got all kinds of monitors. Oh, look at this. It's even got a sunroof. Wow, let the sun shine in. Wow. Cool beans. Wow, a minivan with a sunroof and tons of leather seats. Just think of all the cows that died to make this thing comfortable. And the horn works, one note. We got volume controls over here and we got lots of good sticky chewing gum in the door. Emergency brake, it ain't working. So, I think I'll pedal this thing. Once I fix the uh, coil, get one from the junkyard, the tires, I got lots of good tread on them. Yeah, right. Junk. Needs four tires, needs a battery, needs a coil pack, maybe an idler bearing. All in all, it's a pretty ugly package. But the price was right. I paid scrap price for it. And the transmission had some smoke coming out of it earlier. I pulled up the dipstick, checked the mud. Yeah, seen worse. And there was a little bit of smoke coming out of the dipstick, so whatever. I'll put the battery charger on it, maybe find some tires for it. A friend of mine just sold four almost brand new snow tires. He had one half a season on them, they dumped them for 90 bucks. That killed me. Alrighty. I've got to work on my wheel bearing and this and that and all kinds of toys. No time to play. Oh, oh, listen to this. So I was driving on the Northway last night and uh, cars are passing me. I'm going 55, 60. It's good enough for this old boat. Getting 16 miles per gallon, 19 going down. And a deer leaps out of the woods and crosses the path of the little Japanese Hyundai in front of me. And then I said, hmm, deer's traveling packs of two. Bam! And the guy hits the deer with the right front corner. The deer goes flying and chunks of his car flew off and hit me in the windshield. And the lights were still, the lights of his car that got chopped up by the deer were flying through the air. <laughs> I could see them, they were still lit. And uh, check this out. Bing! Yep chunk of his car was flying through the air and hit me. So we pulled over, his radiator was leaking because it got pushed back in the corner. It wasn't wrecked, but it was a pretty good corner smash. And uh, you drive on the, uh, these roads in the, in the night, the deer are walking around and shoot happens. You take your eyes off the road for a second and uh, hey, you can't have the Pontiac. <laughs> you can have the Cadillac though. So yeah, that's what happened to me last night. One deer leapt across the road, the other one went flying into the ditch <laughs> in pieces. Alrighty, we're gonna go work on something. Enough of this stuff.